tentatively, I'm only taking questions from Jose Young. Sorry to the rest of you guys. It's nothing personal. I just really like that fucking guy. We do our best. Uh, so, Andre, I have to ask. Uh, obviously, they played the package before your fight, everything that was going on in your life leading up to this. Uh, the little, they did a little bit yet. No way. You obviously touched upon it in your post-fight interview. So uh, where does this rank in terms of your career? I know it's obviously not the biggest name, but just everything leading into this and the outcome that it produced. Yeah, I, I said from the beginning of this fight camp that, that this is my UFC debut, and that's how it felt. Um, I was, it was, everything about it was perfect. I was early on the fight card. Uh, it felt like my debut, you know? Everything just felt like my debut. I, I was so calm and so in the moment, so present, and I had so much fun. And that's how it felt when I was 19, fighting for 500 bucks at an Indian reservation. That's how it felt when I was fighting smoker fights in some gym with the windows blacked out. That's how it felt when I was fighting behind my high school when I was 15. Like, I, I love fighting, I'm a born fighter, and I got back to who I am today, and um, man, uh, I could talk a lot, <laughs> but I'm actually at a loss of words. I don't have, I don't have the words to, to explain how immensely, how immensely grateful I am for, for this, this moment right now. And when we speak, spoke earlier this week, you used phrases like, when I win, like, yeah. like, you were pretty confident, like, there was really no, like, yeah. losing was not an option for you in there, so I guess, was there a moment in camp that just kind of clicked and, like, I'm not going to lose this fight? Um, no, it, it's just a choice, everything is a choice. Some choices are harder than others, but everything is a choice, and um, six hours ago, I was sitting with my... Like six hours ago, I mean, most people aren't going to say this, but six hours ago, I was sitting with my team. We did our shakeout, and I literally looked at my coach and said, I've got two voices in my head, and one is telling me that I'm not good enough, and I've tricked everyone into thinking that I'm a good fighter for the last 10 years, and somehow I've stumbled my way through the UFC. And the other voice is like the exact opposite. The other voice tells me how good I am, how hard I hit, how much fun I have when I fight, how good I am at this and that I'm the best in the world. When, I, when I'm in my zone, I'm the best in the world. And um, every, it's just a choice which voice you listen to. And that was something that I just talked about that six hours ago. Every single person, unless you're a fucking, I don't know, a serial killer, like every single person before you get in that cage has a voice in their head that says, maybe, you, maybe you're not good enough. And you just got to make the choice to not listen to that. And t I literally think about turning the volume down on that and turning the volume all the way up on the voice that tells me how good I am. And, that's that's the truth. That combo that dropped him, uh, it was obviously very loud, like physically. When you that's what keep, people keep saying. Yeah, I did, I'm sorry to cut you off. I didn't hear it there, but I, everybody keeps saying the right hand was. It loud. sounded like a bat hitting a like yeah. a piece of wood. I'm Samoan, bro. Just hey, look at just because I'm not as big as the top. Actually, I'm not as big as Tafa or Tui Vasa or Tyson Pedro. I'm Samoan, all right. And I can fucking crack. So. Shout out to the Usos. We also saw you run at the fence and then kind of stop because like we've seen you hop yeah. off. Like so, what yeah. was going on there? Oh, uh, they made it very clear that in Vegas, if you hop on that fence, you're getting fined. And I just thought about all the money I just made that I can't fucking wait to spend on Harley Davidson motorcycles. And I went to run up to the cage and I saw, I, it was like, it was literally a stop sign. Like I saw a red logo and it just went, it was like a stop sign. And I just went, no, 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 no. Is that, is that uh, a new rule? Because like we haven't heard that much. Dude, the thing about fighting is it's fucking chaos. So like every state you fight in, the commission has eight different rules and they change them and whatever. Um, NSAC is, is, always, is always great. CSAC is usually great as well, but um, every state is different. So like you can do something that's completely fine. And I jumped, in, when I fought in Sacramento, I jumped over the cage, hugged the wounded vets program guys, like celebrated in the crowd got pulled back in the cage and the first thing CSAC said to me was like, we're finding you, like right away. So I, I've, 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 I've done it, like I've seen me do it. So I just pumped the brakes. Um, maybe it's a sign that I'm older and, and a little wiser. How much was the fine? Okay, so, so all these guys got their panties in a bunch and when I got back to my locker room, um, the head of the athletic commission came in and said, listen, he's a, he's a great guy, Andy Foster, I believe. Shout out to Andy Foster, man fucking hero. Uh, Andy Foster said, listen, kid, I'm not going to take your money, but don't do that shit again. And I said, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Broadcast uh, before this fight even uh, started said the winner of this fight is going to set themselves up for like a big 2024. Yeah. So I guess what do you want your 2024 to look like? 
I want all the things. I want all the fights. I want all the smoke. I want all the Harley Davidson motorcycles. I want all the, the parties in my backyard with people I love. And um, I want to make my people proud, man. Like, the older I get, and I'm not old, dude. I'm fucking 33. I've already had 10 years in this sport. You know, September was my my 10-year anniversary in the UFC. The, the older I get, the more I realize, like, I only really give a shit about like five or six things and I really, really care about those things and everything else I just don't give a shit about. So as long as I get to win fights and take care of my people, I'm good, man. 2024 is going to be a good year. More wins, more gratitude. The plunge is bananas, by the way. It's good. It's so good. Yeah, sorry, guys. We gotta, we're going to take a, at least a couple minutes here. Uh, the plunge is fucking good. James Tinian is the only reason I care about horror comics. I, oh, I'm sorry. No, it's Joe Hill. Uh, it's Joe Hill. Nice House on the Lake. You got to read Nice House on the Lake by Tinian. The plunge is good. I actually think Basket Full of Heads is better. Like, and, and the thing that's so impressive, if Joe Hill ever hears this, he's Stephen King's son. And instead of being Joe King, he writes as Joe Hill. And then just fucking crushes it. And doesn't, he, like, all he has to do is go, yeah, I'm Stephen King's son. And then he just, he's just set. But he doesn't do that. And, I mean, I don't really have a dad, but you got to respect the guy who's got a dad like that. And... And doesn't lean on it. Just kidding, Pops. Love you. I got a dad. We're, we're cool now. We've, we've become cool in the last, like, two years. Yeah, halfway through, I'm not quite sure where this is going, too. No one knows. Oh, Driver here? Yeah. I'm not quite Jose Youngs, but I have a couple questions. If you, you do all right. <laughs> I'm just kidding, dude. After that performance and you mentioning that this is your debut, is this the start of a new and rejuvenated era of Andre Philly? Yeah. Yeah, this is my debut. And um, this is legitimately... I haven't felt this good. I'm, I'm, this is not hyperbolic. I haven't felt this good in the cage during the fight since I was 19 years old fighting at Red Hawk Casino in Northern California. This is the best I've ever felt where I'm dancing, having fun. Everything he throws is in slow motion. Everything I throw can't miss. Like, I'm him. And when I'm in that zone, like, it's, it's, a, it's a reminder to myself, like, damn, I'm, I can fight, you know? And uh, I'm excited to just keep doing this. Yeah, you definitely look like him out there. So now that you successfully went through your modern day debut, I mean, what pathway do you want to take this time around um, if it was up to you? I can't call the exact next shot. You know, I'd like to get on that March card. Cheeto's fighting uh, O'Malley. And I got, I got a lot of love for my boy Cheeto, and it'd be cool to be on that card. Um, um, man, I don't know the exact next move because I just got out of a cage fight, so everything's still kind of a blur, but I know that everything moving forward is gonna look like it did tonight. I'm, I'm gonna practice gratitude, I'm gonna practice enjoying the moment, being present, and, um, and not taking any of this for granted, man. This is, I wouldn't trade this for anything, I love this life. And uh, when you mentioned there the money you make, and uh, you kind of brought up Harley Davidson motorcycles a lot, yeah. where does that passion stem from? <sighs> my, uh, my grandpa, he passed away about 10 years ago, but my, my grandpa rode motorcycles, you know? And, and uh, plus they're fucking cool. Have you ever seen one? You ever seen a motorcycle? Have you ever seen a Harley Davidson motorcycle? Yeah, you ever seen an American made two wheel freedom machine? You gotta get on one of those, brother. Oh. No, uh, I just love motorcycles. My, it, my grandpa's been riding, my grandpa rode motorcycles my whole life. Um, I've always thought they were cool. Uh, I actually host uh, Harley Davidson's YouTube page. Um, I love motorcycles, and it's one of the only things you can do besides fighting where you can get completely just locked in that zone where you're not thinking, you're just feeling, and you're just completely in tune with what you're doing. And it's so fun, and then it's also terrifying because you almost die, and you just like, it's the same as fighting, man. There's only a few things that can give you that feeling, like surfing, riding motorcycles, fighting. And when you find those things, dude, that get you excited, you got to hold on to them. Another one, I mean, I saw you said that you also mentioned that there's like five, six things you care about. So other than fighting and Harley, David, Harley Davidson motorcycles, what are the, some of those things? I like big booty Latinas. No, I'm just kidding. No, uh, <laughs> no shout out to my girlfriend, Melissa. I love you, babe. Uh, no, nah, yeah, I care about my dog who just passed away, RIP. I care about my friends and family, and, and my friends are my family, and uh, I care about my coaches and my team. So I care about fighting. I care about motorcycles. I care about music. I care about comic books. I, I, we're already running out of things. But my whole life is that. Tattoos are cool. Like there's, a, there's like five or six things that I really fucking love and will nerd out indefinitely on. And everything else, you could just I could take it or leave it. And that focus has, I think, is part of what's provided me with a life that I'm 
really in love with now because I've, in, I've literally, we talk about like um, echo chambers, right? Like in political stuff, which we don't get, gotta get lost in the weeds in that. But we talk about people being stuck in their echo chambers. My echo chamber is just shit that I like to nerd out about. It's just fighting, comics, music, that's, that's the tattoos and, and taking mushrooms in my backyard. That's my whole, that's my life, bro. And it's, I'm, I'm thankful for it. Awesome, that's awesome. And last one for me, obviously, a lot of people know that you've kind of been through a lot of message for somebody that's also going through tough times. What would your message be? I don't know, it's such a, everyone's, everyone's tough times look so different, you know? Um, I can't, I don't know, there's people going through stuff that's way worse than what I've, you know, I've had a tough couple months, there's people who are going through even worse. I would say, find your tribe, find people that you can trust and, and who you can be trustworthy to and find the people who care about you, find a thing that you're passionate about and dive into it. I don't have a lot of like good self-help stuff. I can just tell you what worked for me. Like I was a really angry kid and I got in a lot of trouble and I experienced a lot of tough stuff and doubling down on what I loved is what saved my life. So if you, it doesn't have to be fighting. For me it was fighting. But if there's a kid out there who's going through some tough stuff,